Good evening, I'm Maria Chow. Thank you for joining us for 18 News at 5.30. Early voting has begun for New York's 23rd Congressional District, where some voters will be voting in two congressional races. Republicans will be voting between Carl Palladino and Nick Langworthy for the Republican nomination. The winner of that will go, to the go on to the primary to face Democrat Max Delapia in November's general election. The other race is a special election for the current 23rd District, where Delapia will be facing off against Republican Joe Sempolinski. The winner will finish the term of former Representative Tom Reed ending December 31st. This week, we have invited all four candidates to answer questions submitted by you. There is a form available over on our website where viewers have been submitting questions over the past week. Today, I am joined with tw by 23rd Congressional District Special Election Republican nominee Joe Sempolinski. Good evening, Mr. Sempolinski. Thank you so much for being here. It's always a pleasure time. to talk to you. Of course. And so, just to start off with an easy question, you know, let's just give a brief introduction to our viewers that may not know you that well who you are and why you are running. Yeah, so I'm Joe Sempolinski. I was born right here in the city of Elmira. Uh, spent my whole life uh, living in Steuben County. I live in Canisteo now with my wife and my two daughters. Uh, my wife's Angie, my daughters are Jojo and Maddie. And uh, I am running to, uh, to serve the people that have given me everything. The people of the Southern Tier and Finger Lakes are uh, the folks that raised me, the folks that have given me everything that I have in my life. And if I can speak for them on the floor of the House of Representatives, uh, it would be the honor of a lifetime. So, yeah, and let's go on to the issues now that viewers are asking about. Um, on the issue of health care, oftentimes rural Americans will face challenges that other Americans might not, such as lack of doctors, remote locations. Our viewers want to know what you are going to do about access to health care in this area being a more rural area? That's a very important question. Uh, it's, it's not just a life or death question on health care, but it's also an employment question. In many of these small communities, the local hospital is the largest employer. So it's a jobs question and a health question. So there's you know various federal programs that support uh, critical access hospitals, uh, hospitals in rural areas. I'm very supportive of those programs. Uh, we need to make sure that those hospitals stay open because if, if they close, or people don't have access for some other reason, now you're talking about longer trips to wherever they can get health care. That increases the risk to people's lives. The folks that are working at those health care facilities, they lose their jobs. Now, I'm very committed to maintaining rural access to health care and also utilizing new technologies as best we can uh, to mitigate problems. Uh, so, but once you lose a hospital in a rural area, it's, uh, it's tough to get it back. So we've got to keep the ones we have. Right. So, you, do you think it's more about the maintenance of the act, the healthcare facilities that we already have, or do you think there half of it is incentivizing doctors and and other healthcare providers to come to this area? I think it's all of the above. Uh, for instance, if you're recruiting uh, healthcare professionals, if you can get them here, we have a great quality of life in the Southern Tier and Finger Lakes. Uh, people that come here generally want to stay here, but you got to get folks to come here. We're not the largest metropolitan area in the world. Uh, so you have to have the recruitment side of things, but you also really need to defend the institutions uh, that you have. I'll be a fighter for that rural health care access. Uh, it, it's, again, it's an important life or death issue for people in this congressional district. Right. And just in light of recent federal actions with Roe versus Wade overturned, um, our viewers want to know what your stance on abortion is and what you will do to protect women's rights in the 23rd district. Yeah, I'm proud to be a pro-life candidate. I've been very clear about that from the beginning. Uh, what the Dobbs decision did is returned decision making on abortion to the states. So now each state, through the democratic process as opposed to through un unelected judges, are going to decide what the rules are in each uh, jurisdiction uh, in the United States of America. I think that's certainly more appropriate than just having judicial fiat from on high. Now the people and their representatives are going to make uh, their voice known. Right. So abortion is codified in New York state law, mm -hmm. right? Correct. Will you be pushing to possibly undo that or, or would, like, I guess on the topic of women's rights, what is... What is your stance on New York state law as it, as it well, is? New York state has the power to make the laws that it's going to make. Uh, that's determined by the state legislature. That's determined by uh, the governor of New York. They have the power now under the Dobbs decision uh, to regulate abortion. Uh, each state has the power to regulate abortion. I think each 
state in the union has a different mix of how people uh, feel about, about that particular issue. And we're going to see that play out uh, throughout the country. Uh, each state is going to have the will of the people work on that issue, just like it works on every issue. Right. And with that, let's go to break. Thank you. And after this, we'll have more with 23rd Congressional District Special Election Republican nominee Joe Sempolinski on issues like race, inflation, and climate change coming up next. We are back with the 23rd Congressional District Special Election Republican nominee Joe Sempolinski asking him questions nominated by you. So moving on to a different topic, Joe, just kind of picking, Mr. Sempolinski, picking up where we Call left me Joe, off. Call me Joe, on the topic of inflation, obviously this right. is a hot button issue that is, you know, affecting everyone. If you could, if you had the power to do anything, what would you do to combat that issue of inflation? Yeah, the real issue is the federal government simply spends too much money. We keep injecting loose cash into the economy, and the result is exactly what you expect: is prices go up and up. And this is a real tragic thing because who right, is hurt the most by inflation? It's regular people, people that are maybe on a fixed income, a senior citizen, maybe somebody that's a single parent that's uh, working you know, a part-time job or a full-time job and trying to get uh, to work, put enough gas in their car, uh, somebody that's just trying to buy enough food to feed their family. It's regular folks uh, for whom each paycheck really matters get burned by inflation. I, I would argue it's the number one issue affecting the 23rd Congressional District and the United States right now. That's what I hear the most about is the prices are too high and the Democrats in, in Washington just passed the so-called Inflation Reduction Act. Now, that's a Washington trick. You call something something that's nice, and then it really doesn't do that thing. And that's certainly the case with the Inflation Reduction Act. All the independent assessments say it's going to do little, if anything, to combat inflation. In fact, it might very well make it dramatically worse. Uh, we need to go back to a fiscally sound, fiscally conservative policy to fight inflation. That's the opposite of what the Biden administration is doing, and it's the opposite of what my opponent would do. My opponent has praised that legislation. He would have supported it, and uh, he would just lead us down a path to higher prices that are going to hurt everybody across the political spectrum. Right, and you briefly mentioned gas prices. In this area, truck drivers, farmers, first responders, they all use diesel as their main source right. of fuel, and that is one of the highest gas prices right now, right. and if not the highest gas prices right now. So what when the cost of transportation goes up, everything goes up. Is there something that can be done in the 23rd district with all these people using diesel for, I guess, lowering that cost? Yeah, I mean, this is important. It, it, when you don't have a choice in this area, usually about getting in a car and driving. Uh, subway is where you get a sandwich. It's not how you get to work in the 23rd Congressional District. So when you're talking about uh, anything that we can do to drive the price of fuel down, whether it's diesel or gasoline or anything, I'm, I'm going to try. I'm going to be in favor of that. We need to, and it needs to be not just a gimmicky solution. We've seen some of that from Washington D.C., where they have some sort of temporary stay. You know, that's fine, but it doesn't go to the real root of the problem. And the real root of the problem is uh, we need to, you know, produce more energy here on the North American continent. The Biden administration doesn't want to go down that path. And switching gears now, our viewers want to know on uh, your stance on equality. So here's the question that was sent in. Where do you stand on equality? By this I mean, where do you stand on equal rights for all persons, regardless of race, sexual, or romantic preference, and gender identity? Well, I most certainly stand for uh, equal rights. I describe myself as a constitutional conservative. Uh, part of the Constitution is the 14th Amendment, which says that everybody is entitled to equal protection under the law. Uh, I fundamentally agree with that, and I think that you know, everybody should be equal uh, before the law. Everybody should be treated uh, equally. Everybody should be treated on uh, the merits of how they behave. And uh, that cuts across everything you just mentioned and every other category. Uh, um, all human beings are you know, created equal. That's the fundamental premise of the United States of America. Right, and you're the only candidate right now, switching gears again, you're the only candidate right now um, who has this short term of a December 31st right. deadline. So there's, I guess, in the couple or few months that you do have, what are your main priorities at this moment with, with the term that you yeah. do have? Well, the first priority for any member of Congress or any elected official really be, should be serving the constituents. Uh, I ran in that office the offices in the district for years. So I can make sure we get constituent service back up to speed far better, far faster, far more efficiently than my opponent or frankly anybody else uh, would be able to do. 
in the four months of that term, three of those months, the House is going to be in session, and the House is very closely divided between Republicans and Democrats. So there's going to be votes where whether myself or my opponent is in that seat is going to determine what is going to pass the House of Representatives or not. There will be, there will be closely divided votes. And also, if you want to talk about issue areas where I want to focus, one would be economic development. This is an area that has been left behind economically. Anything I can do to set the table for positive growth is there. Also, I have a, you want to talk about an area of personal uh, interest. I have a daughter with special needs. I would love to do anything I can do to uh, help those with developmental disabilities. My counterpart in the 19th district special election, which is on the same day, Mr. Molinaro, uh, he has a daughter uh, who's on the autism spectrum. I have a daughter with Down syndrome. And we've already started talking about maybe we can do some things in that area uh, to help out folks that are uh, dealing with those uh, type of challenges. But the four months to me is not particularly relevant. I would do this to represent the people of this district for four minutes. These are, as I said, the people that have given me everything. When you stand on the floor of the House of Representatives and you cast a vote, you speak for about three quarters of a million people. That's a sacred thing, whether you do it once, whether you do it a hundred times, whether you do it a thousand times. That vote uh, really goes to the heart of what makes America great, which is representative democracy. Most people haven't had the joy of living under that form of government. We have it. I take it very, very seriously, no matter how long I'm given the privilege to represent the people of this district. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Semplenti. That's all the time we have for as Thanks of for right now. Me. And it's important to note that we have reached out to Carl Palladino and Nick Langworthy to participate in the questioning, but neither have replied to our invitation at this time. If we get a response, we'll have those interviews later in the week during our 530 newscast. And as we continue to hear from the candidates for New York's 23rd District, we want to know what issues are important to you. So if you would like to submit questions, we have a form available over on our website, MyTwinTiers.com. 18 News at 530. We'll be back after the break.